I'd like to introduce our guest speaker tonight. He was originally born in Israel, um, but he has uh, lived in uh, Babylon for about the last 70 years or so. And so I'd like to introduce, uh, he doesn't have a last name, but he goes by, uh, just, just known by Daniel. And so I invite Daniel to, to come and join us all the way from Babylonia. <laughs> A long, long time ago, I was transported along with um, cousins from Israel over to Babylon. And here we are under persecution and we're under the Medes and Persians. And King Darius happens to be in charge. And all of a sudden, I happen to be number three in this whole government. And there's 120 other satraps in charge. And um, because I happen to be Hebrew from the land of Israel, they don't really like me being so high up there in the ranks. So there comes a controversy and they don't want to have me in charge because the king was thinking that maybe he would put me, Daniel, in charge of the whole realm, number two after him instead of number four. And, you know, this didn't make very good friends for the other people because I was a foreigner. So why do I have any prestige or power or authority over these other people? It makes no sense. But the king had a plan. But word gets out, and these people obviously don't like me. I don't know why. I'm good looking. I'm tall. I'm dark. I'm handsome. I've got beautiful long hair. I don't know why they don't like me. I've got a great personality. I get along with everybody. I do no wrong. I do no fault. I'm just a good guy. But somehow I seem to have robbed the person the wrong way. Go figure. I mean, what did I do wrong? But people will always come against you someday along the line because of your looks or your character or your, I don't know if it's that or not. I mean, you know, I've traveled a long time. If I have an odor, you know, it's not my fault. It just is what it is. But anyway, they come up with an idea. So here they are, they're approaching the King Darius and they're over here and they're bowing as they normally would. Oh, King Darius, live forever. You're wonderful, you're mighty, you're, you're just so smart. You know everything about everything. Let's make a decree and let's not have anybody worship anybody for 30 days. Let's see, 10, 20, that'd be about 30 days. Let's not have them worship any God or any person because you're the king. You know everything and you can do everything. So let's make a decree. And the king says, hmm, you know, you're kind of right. I am smart. I am in control of the kingdom. And maybe this is a good plan. So what does he do? He takes his paper and um, he takes out his signet ring and he stamps it on there and he makes a decree. This cannot be changed by the Medes or Persians and it's for 30 days. Nobody will pray and nobody will ask their God or any other God other than me because he thought he was like a God to uh, intervene. So this is signed, sealed and delivered and um, the, the the people are happy. The administrators are happy. <laughs> this is so good. We're going to get back Daniel and we're going to cause a little hiccup in his life. And this is going to be just so wonderful. We'll get rid of him and then we can become more powerful. So anyway, the word gets to me and I can't remember how because I'm not young anymore. You can see by my gray hair and my limp a little, a little bit. Uh, I'm over probably, I'm probably between 70 and 80, somewhere in there. So I'm not young as I used to be, but word gets to me. And I, oh goodness, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm not supposed to pray for 30 days and I'm not supposed to seek God. So I have a choice. I know, I just won't pray. That's simple because, oh, I forgot to tell you. Did I tell you? No, I forgot to tell you. If you pray and you're heard and you're praying to God or some kind of God and not the king, guess what? You have a wonderful reward. You could be thrown in the lion's den. Did you hear that? The lion's den. Roar! These are wild animals and they're not friendly. They love meat, especially fresh meat. So you can be casually thrown in there. So I've got a dilemma. What am I going to do? I know. 
I just won't pray. No, that's not a good plan. I know. I'm thinking, I'm wondering, how am I going to do this? I know. I'll pray quietly. And I won't have the windows open. That way nobody will know. So when they're going by, they won't know I'm praying. Or, let's see, what else can I do? I can pray. I cannot pray. I can pray quietly with the windows closed. I can pray quietly with the windows open. And then God convicts my heart. You know, who am I? I'm God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I brought you through 70 years. Can't I bring you through one more problem? Ah, uh, yes, Lord. Remember your cousins, your friends? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Yes, Lord. They went through the fire, right? I brought them through. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So what do I do? I've got this dilemma. Well, I love God. I serve God. I can't go backwards in time and not pray to Him and not be obedient. But I've got this law on the books that if I pray and they hear me, then I'm going to be thrown in the lion's den. Well, which is more important, to obey God or to obey the king? Well, God has control of my life, but the king has control of my body. This is really hard. So do I worship God and not worry about this body? Or do I obey the king and worship about this body? It's a no-brainer because I've been faithful all these years, and God's been faithful all these years. And he brought us from way over there, and we're way over here. So I'm sorry, king. I'm just going to have to pray. So I go into my room, and I open up the windows facing Jerusalem, and I'm praying. And I'm praying three times a day because that's my normal routine. I pray in the morning, pray around noontime, and pray when the sun goes down. Lord God, you know, creator of heaven and earth, you know what's going on. I'm just one of your vessels. I just have this little bit of life problem. And if you want to intervene in my life, that's fine. If you choose not to, that's fine also, because I've lived a good life. I've been here, and I've done what I could do. But Lord God Almighty, I trust you. I believe in you. And whether I live or whether I don't, it's in your hands. And there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm praying three times a day. And I'm facing Jerusalem. And I'm praying in the morning. And I go and do my things. And I come back and pray in the afternoon. And I'm not quiet. I'm a verbal person. I like to talk loudly or conversationally with God. And God answers prayers. So I go back in the evening. And I pray to God with the windows open. And do you know what happens? These people hear my prayers. So maybe they would get jealous. But they hear the prayers and they know I'm going against the law because remember the king had signed this document and he put his signature ring on it and he said if anybody prays for 30 days except to me, they're going to be thrown in the lion's den. So these nice friends of mine, these associates, these administrators, they go and tell on me, what did I do wrong? I prayed, I broke the law. So they bring me in front of the king and we all bow down. Say, oh, Lord King, reign, reign forever, live forever. And King Darius says, you know, did you not hear my decree? Did you not understand what I said? I said, yes, Lord. But I mean, yes, King, uh, Lord King. Um, yes, I heard, but I, I just, I just, I just, I just I have to go what God tells me to do. He said, well, I'm sorry, Daniel. My, my hands are sealed. So guess what happens? They take me and they throw me into the lion's den. So I'm down here and then I go up here because you have to be able to see me. And then they bring the lions. And all of a sudden, a lion attacks me and it, oh no! And I'm fighting with the lion, and I'm fighting all night, and it's going really bad because he's much bigger and much stronger, and there's just no way I can beat him up, and we're wrestling, wrestling, and wrestling all night, and finally, I die, right? No. <laughs> That's not how the story goes. That could have been how the story went, but God, 
But God, but God in his finite wisdom, mercy and kindness. You see this ferocious animal. This is just a young lion. He may be 150 pounds, but the real ones, they're four times bigger than I am. So what happens? God intervenes and he becomes my friend and I take a nap because God sent angels to close his nice mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. His side is better on that side. My side is better that side too. But anyway, so here I am, total calm and peace. And I'm in the lion's den. And remember, they wouldn't just have one. They would have several because these might be pets or they might be just things to intimidate people. And so that the word gets out, don't mess with the king. He's got a bunch of lions and they're not friendly and they're hungry. So the king is pacing back and forth. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? These administrators, they tricked me. I signed this paper. I signed this paper. Oh, what am I going to do? So they offer him wine. They offer him food and everything else. No, no, no. I don't want to. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Because Daniel and the king had a relationship. Daniel had worked for the king <coughs> for, for many years. Ears, and the king was going to promote Daniel. He was going to promote me to be up there in a high-ranking position. So the king was worried. He got tricked into making a law. So he comes out the next morning and says, Daniel, are you okay? Did your God deliver you from the lions? Daniel, are you okay? There's silence. Because part A, I could have been dead, right? <laughs> but God, but God, but God said, no, because he's faithful, because he's a servant of mine, because I want him to have a testimony, because I want him to know 100% that I am a good God and he's worthy of my protection, I will close the lion's mouth. So. Yes, king, live, Darius, live forever. The God that I serve and have been faithful for all these years, he delivered me from the lion's mouth, and they were closed by an angel of God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and all things visible and invisible, because he had mercy on me, and he talked to them, and they were obedient. Hallelujah. So you're wondering, where do we see in this story that makes any sense? Thank you, Lord, for water. Oh, hallelujah. Let me share a couple thoughts with you real quick, because our time is running close. So if you look in the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel is a wonderful story of captivity. The Hebrew boys were taken. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and their names were changed because that's what the king does. That's what powers do. They change your name to have total dictation over you. The king had decided to make Daniel, who is number three, maybe number one. But look at what he says in this declaration. The king gave, in Daniel 6 and 24, the king gave the command that they brought those men who had accused Daniel, cast him into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. Talk about payback. Talk about don't mess with God's anointed or chosen or prophets. He took their men their children and their wives, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever reached the bottom of the den. So here is God orchestrating something that we cannot fathom. It's called righteous judgment, righteous intervention. 
So don't mess with God's people because he can allow something disastrous to fall upon you. But notice Daniel was obedient. But watch what the king declares. Watch what the king declares. Now this is a pagan king. This is Darius. He's after Nebuchadnezzar and he's after Belshazzar. And he says this, to all peoples, nations and languages that dwell in the, all the earth be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. He did not know our God, this God, but he makes this declaration. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. His dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues. <laughs> and his works, signs, and wonders in heaven, in the stars in heaven, and what? On the earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? Who's going to subdue a lion? Nobody. King David, I believe, did, and a bear, but that was extreme. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius, in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Hallelujah. So brothers and sisters, when you're going through something, are you going to obey the law or are you going to obey God? Are you going to be submissive to the law, which we need to do, obey the law that may be good with you, but sooner or later there's a land a line in the sand, and we need to obey God because He wants us to be faithful and obedient because He will protect us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. We know all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. So in this simple story, you remember the three Hebrew boys, they're thrown in the fire, and the fire is about to burn them up, but there's an angel, and he could he be looking like the Son of God? How could this man know a pagan king other than it's revealed to him? How could Darius make this declaration, there is no other king other than this God? of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So what is your problem today? What is your hiccup today? What is your situation that we cannot trust God to bring us through every situation, whether it's disease, whether it's finances, whether it's your brain going out to lunch, whether it's your body going out to lunch, whether you're facing a lion or you're facing a mountain, will you give your heart to God? Will it be reading his word and standing on his promises. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. Jeremiah 29, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And when you come to me, God says, I will hear you. And when you search for me with all of your heart, you will find me. Hallelujah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, thank you for this day. Thank you for this story. Thank you for the faithfulness of the people that have gone before us and the people that are with us. You said you are our shepherd, so help us to trust you, to believe in you, to walk by faith and not by sight. We thank you for this time in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.